Hey guys, I hope you guys enjoyed part one of just this small series of The Two Shall Become One. Uh, join us now as we get into part two. Hope you enjoy and God bless you. At what point did you, in your marriage with Marie, and, and again, you know, uh, we all know Marie and love Marie, and, and for those who do know her, know uh, she's an amazing, uh, amazing person, which has been significant in my own life. Uh, and but when, when did you realize in the point where the gift that God has given you through Marie was making you a better man, better Christian, a better... I was, in, I was first married, and we hadn't been married more than several months. And we were renting an apartment in Roland Heights, and it was a very small apartment. Marie was uh, pregnant with Corinne, and I had to quit school. We didn't have a, uh, I wasn't making very much money. Uh, we, we didn't have furniture. We, we didn't realize that we were living very close to what would be called a poverty level. We didn't know that. We didn't have two nickels to rub together. We couldn't go out and do anything. We didn't have spending money for anything. Uh, we, we were just, you know, just making it. Marie was working, um, making, you know, not that much. And, and I was trying to be a student, then I was trying to get part-time work. We didn't make much money at all, didn't have anything. Not that materialism is the important thing, but at that point I was a young husband with a pregnant wife, and, um, and I got depressed. And prior to Christ, I was a, uh, you know, alcohol abuser. And, you know, people who know me now probably don't believe it when I say I didn't show emotions. I, I would not show emotion. I was very close. And so the only way that I felt that I could show emotion was if I gave myself an excuse to show it. And as, uh, as a man and, and all, and in the Mexican community, every, every Latino who's listening now will understand what I'm about to say. The, the only time that you show emotion is if you've had a little bit to drink. You have permission to at that point. And that may be a stereotype, but it's a very, it's a very, mm -hmm. very true stereotype in many ways. And so I didn't know how to show emotion. I went out and I bought something to drink and, and uh, I, I drank to the point where I began to feel the effects of the alcohol. And Marie again is pregnant. She's downstairs making dinner for us and we have anything. See, I shouldn't talk about it because I remember it and the emotions come up. But I went into my room and I closed the door. I started to cry, John. I, I, was, I was crying like a baby. I mean, I just was pouring out tears on my pillow. <laughs> and uh, I heard her footsteps coming up the stairs. And the door was closed, but there was some light. I could see her coming up the stairs and the door swings open. And there she is standing at the door. What's wrong? I just cried. And she came and sat next to me. I didn't even have a bed. I had a, a sofa bed. And it was rolled out. We didn't have a bed when we got married. And uh, she sat on the edge of the sofa. And she, what's wrong? And I said, I'm a failure. You made a mistake. You married the wrong man. You deserve more than I am. I'm a failure. And I just wept. She was just a young girl. And she put her arms around me and she pulled me to herself, this pregnant, my pregnant wife. And she rocked me like I was a baby. She rocked me back and forth and she held me and whispered in my ear, you're not a failure. God is going to use you. God is going to use you. That's the turning point. That was the turning point, John, when she did that. Because in my heart, something welled up and I said, I don't want to let her down. I'm going to be what she thinks I am. The rest is history. Amen. That's amazing to see that. And, and this is where I really truly believe that the two become one, as you're mentioning, things like this that the Lord allowed to happen, where you saw 
the heart of Marie, which is actually a gift to you to make you into a better man. Her believing in you. And, uh, you know, for, I'm not the marriage expert, but for us husbands and wives, it, sharing to each other that we believe in one another is probably one of the most powerful encouragements that we can receive. I think that a woman who doesn't believe in that man is going to undermine whatever that man could have been. And if the man doesn't believe in what that woman could be, he'll undermine what God wants to do in her. We have to have an attitude of faith with one another. You know, I'll be honest with you, and I think we should close. This is going long. But I'll tell you this, John. I didn't know how to love. And you've heard me say it a thousand times, but it's the truth. I, it's the truth. I didn't know what love was. I did not know what love was. I didn't know. Uh, I, I, I'd been around, but I didn't know that someone could love me. I just didn't know that. I didn't believe it. And so I, I withheld mine from Marie. She could tell you that. I, I, I'm telling you, I was very cold. I, I didn't say I love you. I was not, I was not affectionate. I, I, I was not the man you know now. I was nothing like that when I got married. I was a macho Mexican man. That's what I was. Um, no emotion, uh, only anger. You know, I could show anger, but I couldn't show affection. And when my girl held me and wept, tell me how much she loved me and believed in me, that broke me. It was, it was that love. And I discovered that a long time ago, that, that love, that's what God uses to change lives. Mm -hmm. See, so um, people don't know what, what I was. They don't know. My sisters could tell you. Marie could tell you. I was very indifferent and cold, not affectionate. I didn't hold your hand, didn't, 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 I, I was not affectionate. I was everything but that. I just didn't trust anybody. And I didn't even trust her. And I wouldn't release any of that trust to her until that day she, she broke me. She broke me by loving me. That changed me. That, and I was already, we were already married. We were pregnant with our first baby, John. But when she did that, that broke me. And uh, from then, I've, I've become more comfortable with, with my emotions. Amen. That, that I think we probably should stop here. I mean, that, that, what an amazing thing to, to see oh, yeah. uh, and how God really shapes us and forms us to become one and the, and the gift that we are to each other, to our husbands and to our wives. And so, Amen. church family, and this is, uh, I really think it was a very heavy and deep felt. It's personal. Yes. <laughs> so thank you for sharing, Pastor. And, and you guys, thank you for tuning in. And, you know, uh, for some reason, if there's things going on in your marriage and you attend our church and are looking to work through those things, we do have biblical guidance available for our church. And, and you know, what to really hear our pastor share about the gift that Marie has been to him and, and uh, the importance of her role in his life and to even shape you into who you are today. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. And so may we always be that gift to one another. Uh, and as for those who are married and for those who aren't, uh, continue to pray that the Lord will, uh, what the Lord has for you. And so, Pastor David, thank you so much for sharing. I want to invite you guys to come out and join us for our services on Sunday at 8.30 a.m. and 10.45. Look forward to having you come out and share a time of worship with each other and spend time in God's Word. And then I'm just going to keep making this a, Make an, it quick. an invitation for Israel 2023 as uh, Pastor David and Marie would like to invite you guys to come out and join a church and, and them both to come join us for Israel trip. So I want to put that out there. Thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you, Pastor David, and God bless you. Amen.